Hey, welcome back. I haven't done any tutorials videos in a while. I've been doing a lot of gear reviews and I hope you've been liking them, but I've really been wanting to do a bit of editing demos just to share what I do with my photos. And on this video, I want to start with the very simple cityscape editing, um, nighttime cityscape editing on Adobe Lightroom. And this should be very easy to follow. So if you are an aspiring landscape or cityscape photographer, this should be a good video for you. On this video, we're going to edit this cityscape image I took in 2019 from Makati City. And there are quite a few things to do, which is of course, first develop the raw file. And next is of course, to clean up a bit of clutter that has to be taken out. And we're going to do that on Adobe Lightroom. And I will show you on the display, both my main screen and the screen plus screen pad plus so you can see everything i do on the secondary screen so this is the image that we are editing on this video and the process for this is going to be very straightforward the first thing we want to do is really develop the raw file bring out the most details that we can and manage the dynamic range of course this is a night shot and there are many dark patches on the foreground along with many clipping highlights on the main cityscape and on on the first few sliders that we're going to use we're basically going to try and bring out more detail from those parts so the first thing i ever do when i am editing on adobe lightroom especially for landscape images is i use my color profile so the color profile is of course these are the different palettes that are given to us by adobe or by the camera manufacturer that would best fit certain scenarios and when you click the this button right here it will give you some adobe raw profiles and also some, some camera matching profiles and mainly i use either of the two sets the others I use very rarely and mostly just for trivial images. But for my main images, I use the Adobe RAW or the camera matching. So these ones are made by the camera manufacturer. And these ones are made by Adobe to give you a better color palette to start with. And I'm going to choose to use the camera landscape. So this is the one that was actually made by the camera manufacturer. And as you can see, the changes on the, the colors are already quite drastic. And these are the ones that are basically the colors that we would normally see outdoors. And, and very conveniently, it also matches the colors that we get in the cityscapes. So from there, you're going to see the things that need to be done. And of course, we want to manage this area, which is quite filled with a lot of dark patches. And on this area, which is very bright and colorful, we just want to bring back some more details that were lost in the clipping highlights. I don't entirely take out all the highlight clippings because I do find those to give a bit more realism in the image taking them out so much will give us a kind of an overly hdr rendered image and that's gonna be less realistic than it would be if we just leave, leave it there and so we start at uh, the exposure i think i nailed the exposure right here pretty well and i shot this at 30 seconds at 48 millimeters f8 at ISO 250 and so I'm first gonna try and manage the highlights by reducing them and as you can see th there's a bit less glow and I don't see any trouble caused by really maxing it out 
also the white. Now what you don't want to do in a cityscape image is to abuse the shadow slider like this because it rarely does any good in terms of bringing back some detail because most of the time there really isn't much detail to bring out. And also I you can see that there's a bit of light bleeding from this area. So what I'm going to do is actually just crop it out. And I want to render this into a 16 by 9 so it can also be the thumbnail for this video. And there. So instead of just pushing the, the shadows on this area, I'm going to use a gradient tool. And actually decrease at the same time I want the colors to match the cityscape a bit so as to avoid just any putting any distractions in there but at the same time I want the gradient filter to also be reducing saturation because remember this area is actually just supplementary to the main cityscape that we have on the middle third and I will decrease the shadows but at the same time decrease contrast increase the blacks because you don't really want to be crushing those blacks And if you want to recover a bit more information actually without giving birth to so much more noise, what you can do is just increase the highlights and the whites on that area. You don't really need the shadow so much, but to, to just give you information on those parts, what you can do is actually just boost the highlights and it will just give more for you. And I think we've managed that. And now I want to pay close attention to color a bit. I like my cityscapes blue because any purple I see on the cityscape looks unnatural to me. So again, the, the color of purple at night, it really isn't that natural. But instead, it's a mixture of the blues of the skies and at the same time, the warm lights in the city so we don't want to tolerate so much purples and very easily what i do is i go to h and l hsl rather go to the purple slider and just move it all the way back to blue and now we have kind of better blending of colors better harmony of colors with the warm yellow as well as the blue sky and basically just complementary colors and what I always emphasize is that there are three sliders that many beginners like to abuse and if you're gonna take anything from this video maybe it's this never use texture clarity and dehaze too much because they end up making your your images over processed and sometimes really ruin them so if you're gonna add some clarity or texture or dehaze i wouldn't add dehaze to this one because i i see no problem in the details if actually even if we zoom in then we can see a lot of detail I and mean, we don't want to ruin that so i'm just gonna add a bit of clarity and just boost the medium details right there Later on, we're going to apply a bit of noise reduction just to make it a cleaner image. And we're going to bring back some contrast because, because some, some tabs that I don't use is color grading. And lens corrections are good if you see the need for them, but I'm very much okay with this. 
So there's a bit of a dile dilemma here because I can see that there's a bit of haziness in the sky. It's a relatively empty sky, but at the same time, it's not as blue as I want. So I'm going to go over again to HSL. Go to blues. And just give it a bit of boost on the blue saturation. At the same time, a bit less luminance. And we have a deeper blue right here. Now, if there were a lot of clouds, I would have loved it. But on this frame, we only have this cloud that's cutted pretty nicely, but is in a very distracting area. So I'm just going to use the heal tool right here and just clone it out. I'd rather deal with an empty sky than something with that and it just looks like it's unintended clutter which is what it already was. Now we're very close to the intended output. The only thing I want to do now is remove some of the cranes. So this is actually better done on Photoshop. Just because Photoshop has a better algorithm in determining what you actually want to remove and determining where to copy off from it. But Lightroom does get it sometimes, so let's see. There we go. Just a bit more here. You can go on Photoshop and clean that even further. So as you can see, during this time, there were a lot of buildings that were still being topped off. I haven't been back there in a while because of the pandemic, but I really do want to see them finished. So this is actually the, the most tedious part of this process. And again, if you want to do more precise editing of those parts, then you can go on Photoshop and even use a pen. I'm not using the pen on my device right now because I don't want to I don't want to do any edits that you won't see on the main screen, but we'll do that again sometime. So, last thing to do basically is just give a bit of noise reduction and always do that zoomed in take out sharpening first just see how much noise reduction you need there we go then that's the time to sharpen and Remember to not make your radius too big, but also not too small because you don't want to sharpen noise. And we're going to apply masking. This is basically telling the computer which parts of the image or which details do you want to actually be sharpened. And I'm doing this by holding the Alt button while sliding the masking slider. And when we zoom in, did we nail it perfectly? Yeah, I think we did. So, so there we go. Very, very simple. That was a very easy cityscape editing. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It's not overly processed. It's giving us good colors, good complementary colors. Um, it may need a bit more work in cleaning up. As you can see, we relied entirely on Adobe Lightroom. I would generally export and move on over to Photoshop just to clean, clean out the, the roots of those problems. 
but generally that's what you can do with your nighttime cityscape images when you're shooting remember to start early if you're shooting the night then shoot around sunset the sunset is going to give you good images anyway and you're going to want to be able to capture that perfect moment when the sky is still a bit bright blue but at the same time the city lights are already illuminated so there if you have any questions about this process any suggestions or any requests for tutorials please feel free to leave a comment down below and if you haven't please share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't thanks for watching